Hey everyone, my name is Alex, and this is the Keybox W150NR, which is the cheapest wireless router I could find on Amazon. At the time of filming, you can buy this router for just $9.99, but is it any good? In this video, that's exactly what I wanted to find out. Taking a look at the box, it's immediately clear that this router is meant to be used in smaller homes, which is to be expected for something this affordable. To give you a quick idea of the specs, this router uses the wireless N standard and not the newer AC standard, and it has a theoretical maximum speed of 150 megabits per second. Inside the box, you'll get a user manual on CD, which I doubt many people will use, as well as a quick start guide, which was actually worth looking at, since it contains the default router password and IP address to log into the web UI. Picking up the router for the first time, I was shocked by just how lightweight it was. At just 6.9 ounces, it weighs over 4 times less than the Netgear Orbi, which weighs close to 2 pounds. However, the router actually feels pretty well put together, and the plastic is decent quality. Also in the box is an Ethernet cable, and of course, the power adapter for the router. After connecting an Ethernet cable from the router to my ISP's modem, and then a second Ethernet cable between my iMac and the router, I went to the default IP address and logged in. While the user interface is pretty basic, it's usable, giving you info on the status of the router and letting you change things like the type of wireless encryption and the Wi-Fi password. Before testing the router, I changed the wireless channel to auto and set a password using WPA2 PSK AES. Now that we've got everything set up, it's time for the most interesting part, seeing how it performs. Routing can't be easily disabled on the modem router combo device provided by my ISP, so to the best of my knowledge, the Keybox and the Google Wi-Fi system I'll be comparing it to will both be running in a double NAT configuration. While it isn't ideal to have two wireless routers operating at the same time, these tests are only meant to give a rough idea of performance, and there are many factors such as interference that could impact the results. It's also important to understand that Google Wi-Fi is a mesh router, which means that there are a total of three Wi-Fi points, one on each floor of my house, operating together to provide better coverage. For the first test, I'll have both the key box and the main Google Wi-Fi unit just a few feet away from my phone. Using the Ookla speed test app, the Keybox router got a result of 36.6 megabits per second download and 43.5 upload. Google Wi-Fi achieved 83.9 megabits per second download and 88.1 upload, which is almost the exact same speed as a wired connection on my network. This result wasn't too surprising, especially since Google Wi-Fi uses the newer AC standard. It's typical to have multiple or even dozens of devices connected to a Wi-Fi router, so to test multi-device performance, I downloaded two copies of the Ubuntu ISO on my laptop while simultaneously doing a speed test on my phone, again just a few feet away from the routers. Google Wi-Fi dropped in performance slightly to 63.4 download and 59.9 upload, and on the other hand, the Keybox router dropped to 36.1 megabits per second download and just 9.29 megabits per second upload. This result seemed a little odd, so I ran the speed test again on the Keybox router and achieved a similar speed of 37.7 megabits per second down and 9.4 up. Based on this test, it seems that the performance of the Keybox router is affected significantly by additional traffic. To make things a little more difficult for the routers, I moved down a floor but stayed almost directly underneath the Keybox and main Google Wi-Fi unit for the test. In this scenario, the Keybox actually had a faster download speed of 41.3 megabits per second, but a slower 35.2 megabit per second upload. Google Wi-Fi unsurprisingly performed well, getting 84.6 megabits per second download and 88.8 upload. Moving a few rooms over, still one floor below the routers, the results really started to surprise me. The Keybox router attained just 0.39 megabits per second download and 0.25 upload. I know the Keybox isn't meant to be used in larger homes with multiple floors, but I honestly didn't think being a few rooms over, a floor below the router would produce such a drastic drop in performance. Google Wi-Fi slowed down somewhat to 36.2 download and 42.3 upload, but the change was nowhere near as significant as it was with the Keybox because of the mesh network technology. Intrigued by these results, I did another test on the same floor, but in a new spot approximately the same distance away from the Keybox and main Google Wi-Fi point. At this location, there was an additional Google Wi-Fi point just a few feet away. 
Once again, the Qbox router performed poorly, with a result of 0.29 megabits per second download and 0.1 megabits per second upload, while Google Wi-Fi achieved 41.9 megabits per second down and 54.2 up. Out of curiosity, I wanted to know what would happen if I moved down one more floor to the basement. While the signal from the keybox was picked up by my iPhone, the speed test failed completely. While a speed test app provides some insight into network performance, I wanted to try simulating a more real-world scenario. So for this test, I tried downloading Google's PhotoScan app on the same floor as the routers and moving just one room over, since the keybox is meant to be used in smaller spaces. In this test, the results were actually quite close, with the app downloading and installing in about 23 seconds on the Keybox network and about 21 seconds on Google Wi-Fi. Since the Keybox router performed moderately well at close distances, does that mean I'd recommend it for a small home? This question can't be answered by a few speed tests alone. There are many other important factors to consider when purchasing a router, such as security. According to the Keybox website, the router's firmware hasn't been updated since July 5th, 2017, which means it may not be getting critical security patches and updates. For comparison, Google Wi-Fi received an update just last month. I'll let you decide whether you think the Keybox W150NR is a good product, but for me, the fact that the firmware hasn't been updated in over 8 months is by itself enough to push me away, even for under $10. While I wouldn't buy it, I'm still amazed that you can purchase a working wireless router for less than the cost of a few coffees. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.